Okay, hello. It's, it's me, I'm back. We're doing that Creative Cities reading, but of course, uh, this is week seven. So midterms are fast approaching. So I just wanted to remind you that for your written midterm exam, uh, if you need to contact me, I will be doing the English camp. So I will actually be in class from 10 o'clock until 1 p.m. So as I've said, I think I said this about two weeks ago uh, in Zoom class, and I told you I would be reminding you again, and I'm going to remind you one more time in this Zoom class, meaning when we meet in Zoom, and that is for your midterm written exam, if it's a real emergency, and what, what I mean by that is the power goes out, your internet goes down, something where um, you cannot access the test, uh, please contact me immediately. If it's not that kind of emergency, for example, your alarm didn't work, you forgot about the test, uh, you slept late, something like that. Uh, you can contact me after 1 p.m. Real emergency, immediately. Anything else after 1 p.m. Because yeah, the, uh, the tests are coming up really quickly. So uh, I believe that's the only thing I wanted to remind you guys about. And uh, yeah, so let's start with Creative Cities reading. Okay, so before we get into the reading, about him. It's going to be a little bit about him and how he got the idea for what he for what he's doing. We're first going to listen to somebody talk about the good and the bad, the pros and the cons of the neighborhood where he grew up in South Africa. So please go to page 41 and I will get the slide ready for you. There it is. All right, so it says here you're going to watch, but we're not going to watch because we know how the videos are. So we're just going to listen. Uh, as a matter of fact, what I'm going to do is just before I start, I will turn my video off on Zoom so that and how can I say this? No distractions. You just see the slide and listen and circle what he mentions. What does he talk about? Circle those things. So you guys should all be ready on page 31. Uh, I cannot pronounce his last name, so I'm just going to say he is talking about his hometown in South Africa. Listen and circle the topics he mentions. All right, let me turn off my video. All right, you can hear my voice. Here we go. I'm from South Africa. I grew up in a city called Peter Maritzburg. It's in the west of the country, not so far from Durban. I grew up in a quiet neighborhood in the suburbs. It's a really nice place with a lot of nature and green space. There are a lot of fruit trees around. And as children, we used to pick the fruit and hang out and eat it all day. Traffic isn't so heavy, so the children can play in the streets. I spent a lot of time outside when I was young. There's a university in Peter Maritzburg, so the nightlife is pretty good near the city center. The only downside, I guess, is that in my neighborhood, the public transportation isn't very good. 
So it's a bit difficult to get around if you don't have a car. But it was a really good place to grow up. I think I was pretty lucky to live there. I'm just going to leave the video up for a while here. When you get near the end, I'll turn the video back on. Uh, all right, so he, uh, he talked about a lot of good things and one or two bad things about where he grew up. So uh, if you need time, pause the video for as long as you need now. All right, so welcome back. You've circled uh, the topics which he talked about and you're ready to check your answers. So let's do that in. All right, so here are the topics that he mentioned. Green space, nightlife, public transportation, traffic. Now, don't worry about if it's good or bad. This, this is what he mentions. Now for the next one, we're going to hear it one more time. And as you can see on the page, you're going to put the good things in the pros area and the bad things in the cons. And of course, uh, it says here critical thinking and because the answers here are not going to be different, uh, as you are listening, think about in general, generally, does he like it or not like it? Okay, but first, of course, the most important thing here is the pros and cons, so let's listen. I'm from South Africa. I grew up in a city called Peter Maritzburg. It's in the west of the country, not so far from Durban. I grew up in a quiet neighborhood in the suburbs. It's a really nice place with a lot of nature and green space. There are a lot of fruit trees around. And as children, we used to pick the fruit and hang out and eat it all day. Traffic isn't so heavy, so the children can play in the streets. I spent a lot of time outside when I was young. There's a university in Peter Maritzburg, so the nightlife is pretty good near the city center. The only downside, I guess, is that in my neighborhood, the public transportation isn't very good. So it's a bit difficult to get around if you don't have a car. But it was a really good place to grow up. I think I was pretty lucky to live there. So right towards the end there, he does answer C. Uh, but let's go into pros and cons. Okay. Well, actually, let's not, because some of you might need a little time. So I'll give you as much time as you need. Just please pause the video now. All right, so let's continue. Let, well, let's check your answers in. All right, so you're ready to check your answers and here we go. Here are the pros. A lot of nature, green space and fruit trees. Traffic is not heavy. Nightlife is really good. Uh, actually, he only said one thing about the cons and that is public transportation isn't good. And he did say he felt lucky to have lived there or grew up there, grown up there that is. So yeah, I did say he, he pretty much answered C at the end there. So yes, generally Craig likes his neighborhood. All right, so be, uh, before we get into the reading, which is next, it'll be on page 44. 
reshaping a city. Actually, let me show you something I forgot to tell you at the beginning. I'm going to make sure that everybody understands the speaking for the Zoom class. So this video might be a little bit longer than normal because of that. I just wanted to let you know right now, usually I try to make it 30 minutes. It might be 35 to 40 minutes. I'm not sure yet uh, because I wanna make sure everybody completely understands what they need to do for the speaking. All right, so here we are. Uh, you watched part of his TED Talk, or maybe some of you um, went to TED.com and actually watched it with the Korean subtitles. You can, you can do that with any of these TED Talks. Um, but yeah, the first part here is pre-reading, right? So this is only the first paragraph. What problems on the south side of Chicago are mentioned? All right, so let's listen to the first paragraph. Oh, sorry, there's no audio. So yeah, pause the video for as long as you need so that you can read it and mark mark the areas or mark the problems that are mentioned in here. As a matter of fact, because there's no audio, I'll tell you what, I'll read it. The south side of Chicago is a part of the city that has seen better days. Crime is a problem and there are few jobs. Many blocks contain vacant buildings, but one resident is using his art to bring new life to the place. Okay, now you can pause the video for as long as you need. Okay, welcome back. Uh, you've circled, marked, however you, however you did it, uh, the problems that are mentioned for the south side of Chicago. Okay. We will check your answers in. All right, so the answers are crime is a problem. There are a few jobs, vacant building. So basically crime, not many jobs and lots of empty buildings. Remember I mentioned that vacant means empty. So if somebody, if like the owner abandoned the building, it was mentioned in the TED talk. He left it empty, which means it's vacant. All right, so one more time, crime, jobs, vacant buildings. All right. Now, here we go. Reshaping a city. The south side of Chicago is a part of the city that has seen better days. Crime is a problem, and there are few jobs. Many blocks contain vacant buildings, but one resident is using his art to bring new life to the place. Theaster Gates saw the decline of his neighborhood firsthand. As he grew up, he watched as buildings were demolished by the local government or abandoned by their owners. But as a potter, Gates knew how to make beautiful things from very little. In 2008, he decided to buy a vacant house not far from his own home, and he started to renovate it. He used the house to stage exhibitions and meetings, 
and the site soon attracted many visitors. The success of the project led Gates to buy more properties, turning them into cultural centers and meeting places. As Gates says, we were slowly starting to reshape how people imagined the south side of the city. One building named Listening House has a collection of old books that were donated by publishing companies and bookstores. Another building was turned into a movie theater and named Black Cinema House. It became so popular that soon there wasn't enough room for all the visitors and a new location needed to be found. Gates is now a well-known international artist. He has taken part in art shows in Germany and the United Kingdom. And in 2014, he was named as one of the most powerful people in contemporary art by Art Review magazine. But Gates hasn't forgotten his neighborhood and his work in Chicago continues. Gates has helped design a million dollar art project for one of the South Side's subway stations. All right, so as you can see, uh, the first part is true false and I'm actually gonna bring the video back. I'll be, you'll see me in just a second. All right, here I am. So uh, yeah, is it true? Is it false? Is the information not there or NG not, not given? It was not, you did not see it in the reading. So true, false or NG. All right, as usual, you have as much time as you need. Pause the video now. Oh, what happened? Okay, it's coming. There it is. All right, welcome back. Uh, you have circled TF or NG and you are ready to check your answers. So we will check your answers in. All right, Tiesta Gates grew up in Chicago. True. The first house Gates renovated was near his home. True. Listening House is much bi uh, bigger than Black's uh, Cinema House. We don't know. Maybe, but it was not in the reading, so we don't know. Uh, okay, few people visited Black Cinema House. That is false. So many did that they had to find a new place, a bigger place. All right, Gates has had art shows in Europe. Yes, he has. And Gates continues to work in Chicago. True. All right, I'll leave this up for just a second. So the answers are T, T, N, G, F, T, T. All right, let's move on. All right, so you're going to read the passage and match each of the paragraphs with the, with the, I guess the main idea for each one, right? So yeah, take as long as you need, pause the video now. Okay, welcome back. Match each paragraph with its purpose. Like I said, think of it as main idea for each one. For paragraph one, paragraph two, paragraph three, and so on. All right. We're going to check your answers 
in all right the purpose or the main idea of paragraph one introduces and describes Chicago's South Side. Paragraph two explains why Gates started his first renovation project. Paragraph three describes how, he, how his first project led to more. Four gives examples of two of his projects in Chicago and five, of course, describes how he continues to work in Chicago despite international fame. Even though he's known all over the world, he still lives and works in his hometown. All right, I'll leave this up for just a second and then we're going to move on to building vocabulary. All right, so building vocabulary. The first part, matching. The second part, critical thinking. Remember, think about it. Hmm, something to think about, because all of you will not have the same answers. Uh, so only A. Uh, match the words in blue from the passage. So these are in blue in the reading. What do they mean? Take as long as you need now. All right, let's go. In. Okay, so block, an area of land with streets on all its sides. Resident, you should already know this, someone who lives in a particular place. Renovate, to make repairs to improve a place's condition. Stage, and okay, Stage here is the verb. To produce a play, performance, musical, etc., which most of the time will be on a stage now. Okay, location, a place where something happens and decline to go down. Okay, so I'll leave this up for just a second. All right, like I said, critical thinking, that is more something for you to think about. And here we go. We're going to listen. What makes a great neighborhood? But you're going to listen to things that, okay, no, no, uh, yeah. You're going to listen to things that make a neighborhood good or great, okay. Here we go. What makes a great neighborhood? What do people look for when choosing a neighborhood? A recent survey found that personal safety tops the list, but many other things also help, such as green space and parks. The availability of jobs. Air quality. Entertainment and nightlife. Water quality. Good roads. And good schools. Yeah, there's nothing really to do here except that was, because this is gonna get, get us now into uh, a couple talking about um, where to move, it says watch and check, listen and check, the neighborhood that each person likes. Do you have any ideas yet about our new place? 
We need to move pretty soon. Well, how about Brentwood? It's a beautiful area. There are lots of parks and green space. Yeah, but it's too far from the office for me. What about Crestview instead? The nightlife is great there. Crestview? No thanks. It's much too noisy. Okay. Well, we could move to Woodlands, I guess. It's pretty green and it's not so far from work. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Why don't we go for a look around the neighborhood this weekend? Pretty easy, but of course, if you need time, pause the video for as long as you need. Oh. Let's move to a new neighborhood. Sorry, uh, no, we don't have to. Maybe listen. we can move to a new neighborhood. We could move to a new neighborhood. One thing we could do is move to a new neighborhood. Why don't we move to a new neighborhood? How about moving to a new neighborhood? What should I do? You should live in Crestview. You shouldn't move to Woodlands. Okay, that was just a little bit extra. But like I was saying, um, yeah, the first part, B, that's pretty easy. So, uh, but of course, if you need time, pause the video for as long as you need. All right, so let's check your answers in. All right, so let me just move something here. Let me move it. Okay, so. And here we go. The man talks about Crestview. And he talks about Woodlands. The woman talks about Brentwood. And she talks also about Woodlands. So, yeah, they both agree on woodlands. It's green and it's near the city. So that's what they said they were going to do. All right, so now you're going to, uh, it's a good thing we actually did listen to that. See, because now we're going to get into asking and giving advice. But in this case, on page 43, it's more giving. Somebody says, what what should I do? What should we do? And this is what you would say. So match the first part of the advice with the actual advice. And of course, as long as you need, pause the video now. Okay, so you are giving advice. What advice are you giving? Let's check in. All right, you should use public transportation so that you can save money. Why don't you get a bike and use the bike lanes? How about planting some flowers to make your yard prettier. Now, how about, it's always going to have the ING, just wanted to be clear there. You should not walk alone at night, it's not safe. Let's check out the local nightlife together sometimes. So this is us, right, together. All right, so uh, quickly, because of time, I told you this is gonna take a little bit longer. So what you were supposed to do here is circle the correct ones. 
and then pause the video, but I'm going to uh, show you the answers because I want to get into the speaking and what you're going to be doing. So don't. Uh, I really like living in Ottawa. So here we go. But I don't like where we live now. I know what you mean. Well, how about finding a new neighborhood? All right, sorry about that. So we, we heard the answer for uh, B. And here it is finding yeah we could we could move downtown the shopping is great there yeah but housing isn't very affordable maybe we could move near the green belt that's not a bad idea i have a few friends in that area great why don't you ask them what it's like all right so the answers here are finding move move and ask uh, don't worry about F. Again, that's uh, we aren't going to be doing that. Uh, the last part is something I made. Uh, so here we have phrases. Which ones are good? Positive. Which ones are bad? Negative. All right. Normally, I would say pause the video for as long as you need, but we will just quickly go over the answers in. Right, and then we have positive qualities. These, that's the list, the negative, there are only two. Don't worry about this. This will also be on your speaking. There's a slide in there. I know you wanna take notes and all that, but this will also be in the speaking. I'll show you in just a minute. Here we go. It's a preview. This is a preview of what you're going to be doing in speaking first you're going to think about your neighborhood what are the pros and cons of where you live now don't tell uh please uh, this is why i've been saying neighborhood the area where you live neighbor the people near you i've had students actually say i really like my neighborhood they always say hello no Okay, so like I said, what we just saw, pros and cons are here. This is, this is your PowerPoint for speaking. So it's exactly, this is what you're going to get. Uh, these are examples of what we just saw. You're, uh, you're going to talk about your neighborhood. What are the good and bad? And each of you will speak. So I'm going to try to make the groups three or four students. Uh, then when, when you guys are finished, you can move on and prepare for the next thing, which is giving advice. All right. We, uh, just uh, This will also be on the PowerPoint so that you can look at it. Advice is always a verb phrase, so you must always, 100% of the time, begin the advice with a verb. Because it always starts with you, sure. That, okay, but remember, it's a verb phrase. And they, it, advice can be serious, fun, good, bad. So for example, oh, no, for example. All right, so here are the phrases, right? You should, you should, shouldn't. I'm just gonna, you will be seeing these when I give you the PowerPoint for speaking. This will all be there so you can look at it to, in order to help you. And giving advice, I did say, you know, serious, my favorite pet passed away. You know, that's really sad. What should I do? Uh, or it can be fun. My friend is having a birthday and I have to buy a, a birthday present for my friend. All right, this is where it might get a little confusing is here. You will see this twice. You can actually do, you can actually do this now, like before the class. It's not homework, but in, so that you're ready to go. This is on page 43. 
All right. If somebody says this to you, what will you tell your friend? So you should, maybe you could, why don't you? This is advice that you would be giving somebody. Okay, this is, again, what are you going to tell your friend? Your friend is A, what are you going to tell them? So just write in the book what you're going to tell them. Then, when everybody has finished writing, what advice they're going to give, right? Then you start. One of you is A, one of you is B, right? And, right, when I come into your room, if you guys want to do A, B, A, B, A, B, that's fine. I'll just listen, that's, that's okay. Or you, can t or you can tell me what advice you gave the other student. Okay. Uh, then of course, if there is time, this last part is if there's time. Uh, this is what we're going to do. Uh, you're going to be in groups, not necessarily four, but three or four. Uh, so one of you, one of you will have a card. I'll show you what the cards are, and I'm going to give you the document in in class. So one of you pick from the card, read it, and ask. Right, one student gives advice. Then. You would say, okay, but blah, blah, blah. So right here. And so another student gives something else that you could do, should do. Go back, yes, but. So then another student, yeah, use but again. Uh, another student gives some some other advice, right? And then the original student says, that's great, thank, thank you all for your advice, but I think Ted's advice is best, whatever, who, whatever the student is. Now, when I come to your room, whoever this student is, uh, you can do one of two things. You can tell me what you were asking and who, whose advice was the best, or you can tell me the advice that each student gave you and which advice you picked. I guess the easier one, and most students pick, is uh, my pr problem was blah, blah, blah. And the, the best advice was Ted's. Ted said, I should, blah, 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 right? So, all right. These are the cards that, you know, you pick, pick from the card, but of course we're going to be in Zoom. So you're going to have the document and you would just pick one of these. Now it only has to be one student, everybody else gives advice. Don't worry, this is a group point speaking. So I know that all of you will be doing this in English. So all of you will be getting the points and then the student you guys choose to, to do this and speak to me, right? So it'll just be one, it'll be one student. So only, you only pick one thing from here and that's it. I'm not gonna go with every student. No, there's, there's absolutely no time. So that is your speaking. And of course, if I was speaking too fast or you did not completely understand, I guess the best thing to do is one, ask me again, ask me. 
rewatch this part of the video, go to the um, class folder, week seven, uh, and the speaking part will be in there. You know, the, po the PowerPoint I'm going to give you just for the speaking and this document will also be there. All right, I did say that this was going to be a little bit longer. Uh, so, oh yeah, sorry. And it's going to be just a little bit extra longer. This is in your PowerPoint for the speaking to help you. This is a dialogue that, right? The other students give di different advice and then you pick the advice that you like the best. Yeah, again, this will be in the PowerPoint, don't worry. So I don't wanna waste any more time. So all I'm gonna say is I will explain this one more time in Zoom and that's where I'll see you. I'll see you in Zoom.